Hello and welcome to Joy in Our Town. Thank you for joining us today. I think we have a fun program planned. Most of us have probably heard of Tai Chi, but have you heard of Tai Chi Cha? And how are they different? Today we are going to be joined by Jessica Lewis, who is the founder of Sculpt Your Life, and that is personal training, nutritional counseling, and moving meditation. Jessica, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much, Kelly. So tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and how you got involved in Tai Chi Cha. Mm -hmm. I actually uh, have a background that is a lot more similar to most people than they think. I started out my life, uh, just like a lot of Americans, very sedentary, um, very overweight for most of my life. I was actually an art major in college, so I really specialized in sitting for protracted periods of time and moving as few muscles as possible. Um, in my early 30s, um, I had my daughter, and um, I had been using food as sort of my stress valve for almost all my life at that point. And you can imagine the weight roller coaster that ensued. And uh, about the time that she was born, it just bloomed again because my husband was becoming fully disabled. And one night when she was one, I think, I was bathing her. And um, I had developed really bad irritable bowel and hypoglycemia. And I, I got so lightheaded at one point, I sort of passed out for a couple of moments. And it was just enough time for me to get the message that I really had to make a shift. So the very next day, I started exercising. And that first year, I really peeled off a lot of weight because I had never moved before. Uh, so my body was so shocked that I was doing something different. It just sort of removed the weight. Um, but another year or so went by before I realized I, I still don't feel all that well. And that's when I started studying nutrition. And a few more years went by before I realized I really wanted to do this for a living and that I had a penchant for that. And even a few more years went by before I discovered there's a missing link. And that is that if we don't find a way to address the stress and offload the stress that we all have, we can still kiss our health goodbye. And I've actually had the experience, not only in my own life, but in observing uh, the lives of my clients, that they can be doing all the things I tell them to do, moving just right, eating all the right things. And unless they address their stress, they can still kiss their health goodbye. So that's why I became accredited to teach Chai Chi Chai. And it, I think it might even be almost the greatest gift that I give anybody. So what is Tai Chi Cha? That's a really good question, <laughs> and I find myself answering that question all day long, every day. Um, many people, um, when they hear what I teach, they say, oh, you teach Tai Chi. <laughs> and I say, well, yes and no, because what most people don't realize when they say the words Tai Chi, at least in this hemisphere, when they say the words Tai Chi, they're actually abbreviating the phrase Tai Chi Chuan, which literally translated means supreme ultimate fist. <laughs> oh. It's a martial art. Okay. It may look very graceful, very beautiful, very dance-like, but it's very powerful. Make no mistake about it. I've heard of a number of accredited Tai Chi Cha instructors and Justin Stone, who was the originator of Tai Chi Cha, actually describing an event in Tokyo, uh, I think it was less than two decades ago, in which a number of Tai Chi Chuan masters surrounded a building and leveled it with their chi. Very powerful. Tai Chi Cha, on the other hand... And they're both derived from Qigong, so they're both health-enhancing uh, practices. But Tai Chi Cha, when literally translated, the words mean knowledge of the supreme ultimate. So that often gives people a very salient distinction right there. It's only 19 movements in one pose, so it's super easy to learn, rather than 108 movements, which all have to be learned very sequentially, take many, many years to learn Tai Chi Chuan. But Tai Chi Cha can be learned in just a few hours by anybody, no fitness level required, no age cap. I've taught folks as young as eight all the way up to 92 with all different kinds of differences and disabilities. It's easy, easy, easy. Now, occasionally you'll see people in the park doing those kinds of movements. Mm -hmm. Is this Tai Chi Cha or is that Tai, what that's, we know as Tai Chi? It's probably Tai Chi Chuan or Tai Chi. If you say Tai Chi, most of the time you mean Tai Chi Chuan. Um, to the untrained eye, they look very similar. And in fact, uh, most of the movements in Tai Chi Cha look so much like a number of Tai Chi Chuan movements. They even have names that are similar, like... Um, um, 
bird flaps its wings looks very, very similar to grasp the bird by the tail. Push pull looks an awful lot like push hands. But there's a whole different thing going on in the body during Tai Chi Cha than during Tai Chi Chuan. And is there any connection between Tai Chi Cha and yoga and those kinds of poses too, or are they entirely separate? It is, it is pretty different. Actually, true yoga um, was always intended to be um, uh, a preliminary to deep meditation. <laughs> so um, I, I'm really sorry to say that in this country, there probably aren't that many really authentic yoga teachers anymore. And, and Americans are very famous for taking things to the nth degree and, and creating almost a competitive environment. So it, it is very, yoga and Tai Chi and Tai Chi practices are actually very, very different. Can you give us a little bit of background about how and when Tai Chi Cha was uh, developed? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, Tai Chi Cha was originated, we like to say. Okay, originated. Yes, by a gentleman named Justin Stone, who was a really fascinating guy. Um, he was born in New York City. At one time, he was a stockbroker. He actually had a share on the stock exchange. Um, and he one day met a Zen writer who convinced him to come to China. And he spent the better part of two decades studying, living, and traveling all around China, Japan, the Himalayas, uh, Nepal, all over the Indian and Asian continents, studying with this century's most well-respected gurus and sages. And when he came back, he became a Tai Chi Chuan master. He was one of the only Caucasian Tai Chi Chuan masters in this country. And then he became a university professor of meditation and Eastern studies. Um, but he was so frustrated with the lengthy learning curve for Tai Chi Chuan that he began dreaming up what he thought was um, warm-up movements to help speed the learning curve. But when he showed his students uh, these new movements, they it had such immediate visceral responses. He realized he sort of stumbled upon something entirely different. So this is a relatively new, would you call it science, fitness, w movement maybe? <laughs> it's hard to describe. Right. No, it's hard to describe. Um, it's, it's really a moving meditation more than anything else. It's, it's a moving meditation, and it is about 50 years old. It's true that Tai Chi Chuan is about uh, a couple thousand years old, and this is only about 50, but it's still really spreading throughout the world. There's several thousand accredited instructors all over the world at this point. So what is the primary goal of doing Tai Chi Chuan? Cha. Cha. That's <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, the, the primary goal for doing Tai Chi Cha is to activate, circulate, and balance your chi. And here in the West, we think that's an awful woo-woo statement. <laughs> uh, but we actually have a lot more uh, evidence to suggest that chi exists than we realize. If you think about the science of physics, when you boil everything down to its most basic state, it's nothing more than energy. And in all ancient cultures, there's an absolute uh, understanding that she exists and that balancing and circulating that is one of the secrets to a long, healthy, happy life. Now, when you say chi, are you referring to energy? Yes, okay. yes. Our body, again, if you boil us down to nothing but molecules, we're nothing more than energy. And throughout our bodies, we have these large channels. They're almost like garden hoses or meridians where energy flows. And one of the reasons why Tai Chi Cha is so easy is because we do it with as little effort as possible. We, also, we always call it the effort of no effort because any kind of muscular effort or tension actually constricts the meridian channels, like squeezing a garden hose. And you know, when you squeeze a garden hose, no water will flow out of it. So it's, it's super, super easy to do. I can't stress that enough. Does somebody have to be like a specific religion or practice a specific spirituality in order to participate in Tai Chi Cha? Absolutely not. It's, it's an incredibly spiritual practice, but it is certainly not a religion. Obviously, it's not a martial art, and it's certainly not a religion. It tends to attract a really wide, completely non-denominational audience of practitioners and instructors, because one of the wonderful benefits of long-term practice is this vast capacity to empathize. And all ancient cultures and religions consider that an enlightened state or even a saintly attribute. So it's certainly not a religion and you don't need to practice any kind of particular religion or spiritual practice in order to practice Tai Chi Cha, but it is deeply spiritual. 
is the empathy a result of the meditation that that's going on or is there some other element that's being taught that is, is leading to that? No, it's actually uh, some of the changes that occur in the brain over the course of time. Oh. Uh, there's a little section of the brain called the amygdala okay. and that's sort of our fear center. So whenever um, we think something is dangerous, um, that thing goes crazy. And in people with PTSD, you'll find that their whole mind is being held hostage by that amygdala. But over the course of time, and this is true of all meditation, by the way, but it's because Tai Chi Cha is so easy to learn, I always think Tai Chi Cha is the easiest way for this to happen. Um, the amygdala just starts to stop controlling the show. Um, other parts of the brain literally light up like a Christmas tree under all forms of meditation. And so um, that's one reason why we become so just open to understanding who we are and what our place in the universe is, is because our brain waves actually change over time. Oh, wow. There's a lot of hard studies, hard science, I should say, that have proven this to be true. So while you're moving, you're meditating. Are you meditating on anything specific? No, here's the, even the most amazing thing about Tai Chi Cha. You are meditating when you're doing Tai Chi Cha. And the way that you're doing it is by grounding your energy and most of the time thinking about what's going on in the soles of your feet. It's amazing. <laughs> and if nothing else, what's going on when you do that is you're drawing all the attention out of your head. Mm. Uh, and <laughs> I like to call this the monkey mind. I mean, we all have this crazy mind, it just never stops talking, right? I mean, I think we even have thoughts about our thoughts. <laughs> so even if you just spend 20, 30, 40 minutes a day with taking a break from that, your health will absolutely be enhanced. But again, there's so many really hard science studies that have proven all of the health improvements that can occur over the course of time with just a few minutes a day of practicing this thing. Now, one of the benefits is supposedly uh, de-stressing, right? So it is going to decrease people's stress levels, which I think is probably a huge, absolutely. huge benefit in today's massive, day and age. Massive. Massive. But also, we're talking about, again, lots of hard science. I want to just keep hitting that over and over again because it's true, of uh, people reporting massive increases in their capacity for joy, for peace, but also huge reductions in particular physical conditions like that, that have been studied, arthritis, COPD, um, uh, shingles has actually been studied. Uh, there's a direct uh, correlation between uh, better immunity to shingles when you practice Tai Chi Cha. Wow. Uh, just heightened immunity in general, uh, more comfortable aging, um, less stress on the body, improved balance, more mobility. There's just so many things that occur over the course of time. And again, it only takes a couple minutes a day. Is there a specific age range or can anybody learn? Anybody can learn. It's true that Tai Chi Cha seems to attract frequently attract an older audience because oftentimes people that are older don't have the ability to do a lot of things that other people can do or they think they can't do those things or they simply can't do the things that they used to be able to do so they're beginning to their world is shrinking um, but one of the great things about Tai Chi Cha is that with very few modifications it can even be done from your chair and folks that have been practicing for a while even discover that when they visualize the movements in their head they still get the same benefits but again I have taught folks as young as eight <laughs> all the way up to 92 I've taught folks with disabilities and differences and I, I had a client for years and years that I do personal training with um, who's been blind since birth and I'm in a discussion with him right now about whether or not this might be beneficial so anybody can do it wow. Wow. Anybody. I feel like we just barely scratched the surface of this, but it was fascinating, and I know I learned a lot. So thank you for sharing with us today. Thank you, Kelly. And thank you all for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something, and we'll see you next time on Joy in Our Town.